Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com. Got a bit of a cold here, so please put up with me. I mean, you have this long, so I appreciate it. Here with <clears throat> a rather faceless collection of Mozart, symphonies 39 through 41, with the Kammer Academy Potsdam under Antonello Manacordia. Now, we talked about his Beethoven cycle. He also has a Mendelssohn cycle and a Schubert cycle. You know, they're all decent. If I lived in Potsdam and I had to go to my local Kammer Academy for a concert, I'd probably be happy with this. There's nothing wrong, but it's nothing interesting either. And it's really a problem. And, and, and to really sort of, you know, sum it all up very simply, consider Symphony Number no. 39. That's kind of my litmus test for people who know how to do interesting Mozart. Well, he doesn't know how to do interesting Mozart. First, the minuet. Chum, chugga, 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 chum. Eh, eh, chum. You know, it sounds like a barrel organ. It can have so much fun, um, you know, in the rhythm and in the articulation and in the accentuation. Well, all the minuets in these performances are simply too fast. They're just too fast. You, they don't have any graciousness, any of that pomp and swagger that an aristocratic dance like the minuet ought to have, especially when Mozart writes them. Now, other composers like Haydn wrote quick minuets, minuets that have, you know, syncopations and stranger things. Mozart's not like that. Mozart really emphasizes that that dance rhythm that you might actually hear in a ballroom. There's that feeling of it. You know, I mean, you just got to have it. And the way the woodwinds make the sound of like an accordion, a squeeze box kind of thing, you know. Well, you, you don't catch any of that in this performance of number 39. And you don't have any of the ferocity, you know, that, that you, the grimness in the G minors minuet. Or, you know, the same thing with you have that, that, really floating kind of elegance in the Jupiter Symphonies minuet. They're all just too fast. And if you play them that quickly, you're not going to get the right kind of lilt to the music, the right rhythm, and the right enjoyment of the texture and, 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 and element of the dance that Mozart brings out so well. So those are a wash. Then we come to the finale of number 39. Now, there's one of those things where it's all about balance and texture and what you do with your woodwinds. Particularly, you know, when that theme comes back after that central thing, my, my, my acme for those performances is Klemperer, because Klemperer has a very forward woodwind balance. It's not that he's slow, but you hear the inner texture. You hear the chuckle, 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 chuckle. You know, you want to hear these, these wonderful inner lines and the color that Mozart writes into the score. And then when the tune comes back, da 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 the woodwinds interject, doo doo ba doo doo Just those little two-note interjections, three notes, they can have so much character, so much humor and wit. And it, none of that's here. It's all just accurate. It's merely accurate. Typical period instrument style accuracy without any particular flavor. You want flavor. You want zest, character. I mean, the Jupiter Symphony is also particularly problematic in these performances because I, the first movement particularly happens in shortish phrases. Bum, ba da dum, ba da dum, da 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 da, right? Then da, mm, mm, da, da, mm, mm, mm. It all falls apart unless there's some sort of coherence, continuity, a certain amount of legato in the phrasing. You have to knit these short phrases together into longer paragraphs. And when people do this period instrument crap, frankly, you know, this everything is chopped up. Everything is dry. There's no, there's no connection between the various moments in the movement. And it just hangs fire. I mean, it never feels like it's going anywhere. And of course, these pieces go places. The slow movements, of course, you've got that sort of thin string tone with minimal vibrato and and they don't sing the way they're supposed to. I, you know, I, I can complain endlessly. And it sounds like it's a litany of negativity. It really does. But uh, the truth is, these are no better or worse than 99.9% than .9 of today's period instrument influence performances. They all sound like this. 
I said the same thing about his Beethoven. It's, it's a cookie cutter review of cookie cutter performances because the pluses and minuses are all the same. The pluses are accurate performance, lively tempos, generally speaking. Uh, you, you, you know, it's, it's, it's what you expect to hear today in performances of classical period music. But the negatives are much, much greater. And just that lack of personality and character really, really hit me hard listening to these. And then, of course, there's the old complaint that, you know, the food was lousy in such small portions. Two CDs, three symphonies. I mean, they could have had a whole nother symphony on here very, very easily. I, I just don't understand why these things get made. Well, they get made because obviously these people have some money. They found some funding. They paid off Sony to release these discs. And so Sony is duly releasing them. But of course, Sony isn't going to promote them or say anything about them or let anyone know that they exist. In fact, I'm giving them more publicity than they probably will ever have from anybody. Or, you know, it, it's amazing that way, isn't it? It really is. So, so like I said, Maybe a nice night out at the concert at the symphony if you want to hear these things, but to buy these and add them to your collection and listen to them regularly? Oh, hell no. No way. So keep on listening, friends. Thanks for joining me. Take care.